Social justice leftism. These people are just criminal leftists who hate their country. They hate their, their own people. They hate Christianity. They hate Western civilization. The Marxist collectivist narcissist is because they have a Marxist interpretation of the world. Those femo fascists. They are cultural Marxists. That's what they think. Communism in America has talk about cultural Marxism. She's running on cultural Marxism. Every university is filled with leftists who are bent on indoctrinating you. LGBTQ. Now they got the Q there for questioning. I don't know, baby. <laughs> if you look at Elam in A Voice for Manginas, the the prosthetic penis. The, the Black Lives Matters protesters are parasites. I mean, they don't care whether they destroy America. All is queer. Never fear Rodolfo here. If you're voting for Hillary Clinton, you are a dirty traitor. You are nothing but a traitor. You are a worthless man. They go there. They change the profession. It becomes more female-oriented. Rather than work, there's more talky-talk. The stupidest guy in YouTube history. To me, they're all just Marx, cultural Marxist academies anyway. Communist Party USA. A cultural Marxist. Which Leftist social justice warriors. Uh, the left is now in our universities. Is it's nothing more than a, a Stalinist cabal that seeks to control everything. Full frontal feminism. The statists, because she is a leftist. Communism. Oh God, it's another one of these fucking people, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for this one, folks. Welcome to episode 10. Yes, we've reached double fucking figures. Can you believe it? I certainly fucking can't. But anyway, welcome to episode 10 of The Descent of Man, Osphere. The series in which I take you through the ways in which the ass clowns of the Manosphere are trying to reverse human evolution and drag us back into the fucking sea. And today we're dealing with a total asshole called Bernard Chapin. No, that's Charlie Chaplin. No, that's an army chaplain. No, that's chafing. No, that's a chaffinch. Jesus Christ, Rory Cat, stop fucking around with these pictures. No, leave those photos in. They will be funny. Also, it is a way of you crowbarring me into the video. And we all know that you have struggled with that in the past. Yeah, I suppose I have struggled with that in the past. And I do get the feeling it's rather cynical exploitation of a cat due to the fact that the internet loves cats. But then again, you don't actually pay me any fucking rent, do you, so... I catch several frogs, the occasional mouse or rat, and even sometimes I catch a fish from the next door neighbour's pond, although I hope they are not watching this video. Rurikats, I hardly think that counts as rent, to be honest. Shut up, go give me some chicken. Alright, I'll give you some chicken in a bit, Rurikats, I'm just doing the video. But anyway. Yeah, that's Bernard Chapin, the fucking prick. Bernard Chapin has a rather annoying and ultimately nonsensical fucking bullshit catchphrase. Welcome to Chapin's Inferno, a wandering cauldron of politically incorrect commentary. He does this really rather annoying thing as well. Welcome to Chapin's Inferno, a wandering cauldron of politically incorrect commentary. Great to see you again at Chapin's Inferno, wandering cauldron of politically incorrect commentary. You see, Bernard, when you have it in the intro sequence, you don't then need to say it at the start of when you actually start fucking talking, you dickhead. But anyway, the old Chapster liked to think of himself as something of a political expert. But he isn't. He's a fucking moron. And specifically when it comes to Adolf Hitler. Yes. You know what kind of person we're dealing with here when the video starts with, let's talk about Adolf Hitler. Hitler and the socialist dream he declared the National Socialism was based on Marx. Socialists have always disowned him, but a new book insists that he was at his heart a left winger, which of course that's absolutely the case. Okay, let's have a look at a few quotes from Adolf Hitler, shall we? Quote, 
If, with the help of his Marxist creed, the Jew is victorious over the other peoples of the world, his crown will be the funeral wreath of humanity. And another one, quote, Slowly, fear and the Marxist weapon of Jewry descend like a nightmare on the mind and soul of decent people. And another one, The problem of how the future of the German nation can be secured is the problem of how Marxism can be exterminated. He literally felt that the future of the German people depended on Marxism being destroyed, you stupid bastard. I never tried to read Mein Kampf even as a historical document. I have no interest. I, I never tried to read Mein Kampf. Yeah, that's right. You want to be taken seriously as to the political positions and beliefs of Adolf Hitler even though you have not even tried to fucking read his defining political manuscript. Do you have any idea how fucking ludicrous that is? That's like saying, I want to be taken seriously about meteorology, but, you know, I've never even tried to look at clouds or shit. I mean, what the fuck's rain? The idea of the Fuhrer's message, but it was never put in writing. That's one of the themes of the Von Say conference which is one of the best films ever made is is uh, where is the writing where is the hand of the fuhrer well he wasn't going to write that down that uh, certainly heydrich was acting with uh, uh his authority you might want to tell your fellow intellectual davis mj orini because he seems to believe that there was no plan by the leading nazis to you know exterminate the jews or anything because you know he's a fucking idiot yeah, that's right, Davis. I haven't forgotten about you, you little fucking neo-Nazi Holocaust-denying fucking conman prick. In America, whenever they talk about American conservatives being Nazis, we're the epitome of, of anti-Nazis because we don't believe in statism. Oh, my God, Chapin, you're such a fucking idiot. We, we don't compare you to Nazis because we think you might be a statist, whatever the fuck that means, because basically it's so elastic a term when you use it. It can mean basically fucking anything. We say it because the right is incredibly racist, homophobic, intolerant of any other number of minorities, imperialist warmonger fucking dickheads, and very often times religious bigots who wish to enforce their will upon everybody else. So, whilst I agree that the term Nazi is flung about a little too loosely in the modern world, there are some very clear comparisons to be drawn between the American right and the Nazis. So, you know, just fucking deal with it, you prick. Now a video here at Chapin's Inferno, a wandering cauldron of politically incorrect commentary receives more in the way of negative postings than my 2008 one on liberal fascism. Oh, come on, Chapin, you must know how ridiculous a term that is. Liberal fascism isn't really a thing because, you know, it basically can't be a fucking thing because it's a fucking oxymoron. You fucking moron. Yet in America, the right stands for liberty while the left stands for coercion. They want to tell you how to live. We just want to leave you alone. Oh, really? So basically, it would be impossible for me to find loads of clips of the American right standing for coercion and against liberty and telling people how to live their lives, right? Roll the fucking clips. It is appropriate, it is right to discriminate against sexually immoral behavior. Now, homosexuality is sexually immoral behavior. So it's entirely appropriate for us to discriminate against homosexual behavior and to adopt public policies. I believe that we need a constitutional guarantee for traditional marriage between a man and a woman. I believe that abortion should be clearly stated and illegal across this country, and I would work to defund parent parenthood. The American people needed to be informed about what this means and what a mosque at ground zero means. We should be very circumspect about, about allowing this project to go forward. This could actually radicalize more uh, uh, Islamists around the world for future attacks against the United States. And I'll direct this specifically to Ms. Palin. Suppose Senator John Doe puts forth a constitutional amendment that would outlaw abortion, even in cases of rape or incest, and he asked you to attend the announcement and support him in that. Would you do it? You're, you're asking if 
in front of me were legislation that I would be asked to sign? No, if he was going to put forth a constitutional amendment and he just wanted your support, the party, you know, as a, as a party member, as the leader mm -hmm. of the state. Um, I would. I would. And Quakers can become conscientious objectors. So you have a country where religious minorities get to choose which wars they fight in, but not whether to serve cupcakes at a wedding that would violate their religious principles. It's insane. What does it say about the college co-ed Susan Fluke, who goes before a congressional committee and essentially says that she must be paid to have sex? What does that make her? It makes her a slut, right? Makes her a prostitute. So actually, clearly the American right isn't really for liberty at all. So shut up, you dickhead. Admittedly, many non-radicals, like even those that watch this channel, vote for the Democratic Party. But there are almost no normal folk who serve as their politicians. They're all coat and tie radicals. They seek to constantly expand the size and breadth of the government. And then please do explain to me, Bernard, this fucking graph from Forbes.com, which is an annualized growth of federal spending, you know, massive spike there uh, under Reagan and then George Bush Sr., then a massive drop under Clinton, Democratic president, then a massive spike in uh, George Bush Jr., George W. Bush's uh, presidency, and that's including, as you can see there with the asterisks, the 2009 stimulus was reassigned to Obama's numbers, and even then, it's a massive fucking drop under Obama, another Democratic president. Please do explain that graph to me, because it seems to me like you're talking shit. If you don't believe me, just ask some sort of jacked up Democratic drone what his suggestions to improve the nation are. And, I, and it's a rhetorical question because I guarantee that every time he's going to answer with something that increases the size of the government. Don't make me show you those fucking graphs again. Look, you don't know what you're fucking talking about, Chapin. So how about you, you know, shut the fuck up. But whilst we're on the topic of stuff he's got completely fucking wrong, it's now time for... Yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape. whoop de fucking do Now, usually on the inevitable bit about rape, I show you something absolutely fucking heinous that the person has said about rape. But rather than just do that this time, I found a video from Bernard Chapin that is so wildly inaccurate that I thought it just couldn't go unchallenged. So let's have a look at what the fucking idiot had to say. So let's go out there and win an argument. A very important argument at that. Today, in part four of our infernos, and yes, part five is already done, so I won't be forgetting that, uh, concerning the feminist manufactured new federal definition of rape, would that be the feminist manufactured definition of rape that counted men who have been raped as part of the statistics for the first time in American fucking history? Would it be that manufactured definition? Bernard. You know, the one that shows that actually feminists are better at fighting for men's rights than supposed fucking men's rights activists. Yeah, that one. Burn. Their cherished big lie, which is that rape is about power. Rape isn't about power. It's about reproduction. Incorrect! Now the link to this paper is below and I'm going to read to you from this paper published by the United States National Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health. A little bit from the abstract, okay? The authors ranked accounts from 133 offenders and 92 victims for the dominant issue and found that the offences could be categorised as power rape, open brackets, sexuality used to express power, close brackets, or anger rape, open brackets, use of sexuality to express anger, close brackets. There were no rapes in which sex was the dominant issue. Sexuality was always in the service of other non-sexual needs. So, Bernie Poos. You're fucking wrong. We all know why you're fucking doing this. It's because you want to normalise rape, you fucking sack of shit. You want to make it so that it's, oh, it's just about sexuality, and everyone has sexuality, therefore you shouldn't really criticise rapists, because, you know, they're just expressing a perfectly normal thing, but they just took it a bit too far. You fucking evil little prick. I wouldn't, because I'm not an unethical piece of scum, but... <laughs> 
unethical piece of stuff. Incorrect! <sighs> yes, you are. That is precisely what you fucking are. If feminists were right, then rapist dirtbags would violate Hillary Clinton and Barbara Bigkowski, as they're the ones who have power, not some freshman in college. A freshman in college has no power. Oh, for fuck's sake. I c How fucking stupid can one human being be? It's not about taking power from someone who is incredibly powerful. It's about taking power from anybody. It's about taking someone's self-determination away from them. It's, I can't even get my head around how fucking stupid that is. How have you... I mean, you've reached fucking middle age. How have you not strangled yourself on your own shoelaces or choked to death on a fucking spoon or something? You fucking moron! So as you can see, in terms of his politics, he's the kind of guy that thinks that Genghis Khan was probably a little bit too liberal for his fucking likings. So I always support candidates that are the farthest to the right of the political spectrum. I get more libertarian every single day. I get more libertarian every single day. Yeah, you do seem to be losing IQ points by the fucking day. He's basically Aaron Clary, but even more stupid if you can imagine such a fucking thing. And whilst we're on the topic of his friends and allies, let's take a quick look at the kinds of people he likes to associate with. Well, actually, you're here at Chapin's Inferno, and I wanted to celebrate this great little poster given to me by my friend, your friend, and Sargon of Akkad's friend, Davis M.J. Arini, one of the best guys I can think of on the internet. That would be the neo-Nazi Holocaust-denying fucking con artist, Davis M.J. Orino. Really? Is he one of the best people on the internet? I know the internet's full of fucking assholes, but you've got to up your fucking standards there, Japes. And here with Roosh, now they want to get stop him from selling his books on Amazon. They say he's a rape supporter. Well, that would be because he is a rape supporter. I mean, he literally wanted to legalise rape. How else could you possibly describe him, then, other than a rape supporter, for fuck's sake? He has problems doing it with this channel. He'd have problems doing it with Rocking Mystery. He doesn't want to deal with anybody of substance. Hang on a minute. You think that Rocking Mystery is a person of substance? I mean, he might be a person of fucking substance abuse. That would explain why his fucking brain's so frazzled. But come on. So let's get on to our first story here. I saw this over at Roycey. Uh, it's Chateau Hartiste now. And... He's a good guy to consult with because our main story is about a couple of pickup artists. But, uh, and I know Forney was saying that... Uh, that Roycey and Matt Forney in the same section. Classy. So many people to thank, so many people to cover. Um, Aaron uh, Clary, I was listening to his podcast last night in the middle of the night. Do you have any friends that aren't total pieces of shit? Now, the old chapstick also likes to do little comedy skits with a character of his he's got called Rodolfo Schneevy. Now, for full disclosure, I should admit that when I first heard that name, I genuinely fucking lolled. It's so fucking ridiculous, isn't it? Anyway, essentially he's this kind of incredibly effeminate character uh, who he constantly refers to as a mangina, because essentially he's the composite of all the mental fucking gymnastics that these fuckers have to do to convince themselves that anyone who isn't exactly like them must be some sort of effeminate fucking ballless mangina dickhead or something. And so he's created this character to impose his world view upon, and it's, it's so ridiculous. Born on a trash heap in Barrington, white knight lad in the land of me, raised at the mall so he knew every lass, killed credit cards and bought stuff in mass. Rodolfo, Rodolfo Schneeby, peasant filled with shame and fear. You know, I've been crying all day in the name of social justice. But did you know that there's now a collectivemangina.edu and a lubedmangina.sf? A cup of percolating mangina. Uh, really, all the sexes are the same. Although, on the other hand, there are 52 different genders, but that's a different story. Anyhow. I oh, mangina, you reconstructed man. 
But my favourite video of Rodolfo's, as it were, uh, is one where he is talking about Dean Esme leaving a voice for men. Oh, sorry about that, everybody. I was just in the middle of watching my favorite show. Paul Elam here for a voice for men. Okay, you have my attention. Some of you know that we've lost Dean Esme as our chief operating officer this week. Uh, I don't have any comment about that. There seems to be problems with people we bring on board sharing power with me. They don't understand that I and a voice for men are the same thing. But here we have a replacement who has some fantastic fundraising ideas. I give to our new chief operating officer, Rodolfo Schneevi. <laughs> It's still funny. <laughs> so stupid. Okay, I'm taking over. We're going to have a few rules. The first thing we're going to do is we're changing it to a voice for manginas, which it's always been anyway. <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. Oh, God. I mean, not in the way he intends, but it's still really funny. Everybody must contribute $2,500 if they want to be a member of A Voice for Manginus. Rodolfo, if I may step in here for a moment, that's an excellent idea. <laughs> Look, Bernard, whilst I agree with you that Paul Elam is clearly a fucking money-grabbing con man dickhead, you're still fucking BFFs with Davis Orini, a fucking balls-out, grifting, shyster of a con man cunt. So you are really in no position to call out anyone else when it comes to financial shenanigans. But his usage of the phrase there, a voice for manginas, is actually quite interesting and telling. Because uh, Bernard Chapin absolutely fucking despises a voice for men. Which is, I think, the one thing we agree on. But we come at it from very different angles. Because he essentially doesn't like a voice for men because he thinks they're too left-wing and too nice to women. Just let that sink in for a second. That might be the most ludicrous position anyone has ever taken on anything ever. And he never misses an opportunity to attack them. Elam hears his criticism, then he has like some 45-minute video, which I didn't sit through. Oh my god. So again, right, you didn't even watch the fucking video, but you're still going to comment on it, even though you're totally fucking ignorant of what it actually contains. Oh, of course you do. You're a fucking conservative. That's, that's your whole fucking shtick, isn't it? Uh, attacking people, they're slacktivists, they're not real MRA activists, and he's an activist, and people should just be quiet, and he's very much a narcissist. He always has been. Look, again, right, just like the money-grabbing bit, right, I agree with you that Paulie Lamb is a narcissistic dickhead, but you are still best friends with Davis Orini, arguably the most narcissistic human being that's ever fucking lived. I mean, do you have any amount of fucking self-awareness at all? I'm not sure what they do. They tell me that I don't know anything. But I'm not sure what they accomplish. Well, they don't accomplish anything, and neither do you. You're all fucking losers. Uh, and I think that, uh, and you know, I, I think that my primary purpose is to provide people with uh, information. Well then, you utterly fucking failed in that one task, you moron. Education and persuasion is an extremely important function. I try to engage people's minds. I don't try to deceive them. You aren't fucking intelligent enough to deceive people, you stupid bastard. Now Bernard Chapin likes to express his political philosophy like this. My agenda is liberty and fewer laws for everyone. But just as with all libertarians, he doesn't have a fucking ounce of principle in his body. China detains feminists and it's in ahead of Women's Day. I'm good. I'm glad somebody's waking up to what these people are about. I really am, even if it's for not necessarily the right reasons. Another campaigner, Zheng Churan, has also been taken away from her home in Guangzhou, the activist said. 
AFP was not immediately able to confirm her detention. China's ruling Communist Party has publicly highlighted International Women's Day, which falls on March 8th, with officials hailing the advancement of women's rights and organizing events for female journalists in Beijing. Tomorrow is International Women's Day, so everyone is paying attention to the national policies relating to gender equality, and respecting women is also a mark of societal progress, she said. Yet Chinese authorities regularly round up activists and force cancellation of events ahead of key dates, wary of any de demonstrations that could spiral into dissent against the party's rule. While social justice has been offended, and as a social justice warrior, I am offended. And I know lots of you are too. So I thank you guys for sending this over. I'm going to spend the rest of the day crying. I expect that you're going to do the same. Yes, that's right. He has absolutely no problem with the communist authoritarian government of China arresting feminists for no fucking reason. You see, Chapin, that makes you a fucking authoritarian piece of shit. Remember earlier when you got really annoyed that people were comparing you to the Nazis? Now do you understand why they fucking do that? But anyway, I think we've got time to fit in one last piece of bigotry. On you go, you fucking prick. So we talk about Caitlyn Jenner and how brave and proud she is. But, or he is, or... No, Caitlyn Jenner is a she, okay? What is it about these fucking manospheric shitwads that they find it so difficult to get their heads around the concept of transsexual people existing? Anyway, I'm fucking done with this guy. Let's wrap this fucking nonsense up, shall we? Bernard Chapin is almost war corpse-esque in his fucking breathtaking ignorance and stupidity. He really is. He's an all-round bigoted sack of shit. And a really fucking boring one as well. He's just a completely and utterly loathsome character. So, Bernard Chapin, go fuck yourself. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. We don't need no water, let the motherfucker burn. Burn, motherfucker, burn. Hello, my name is Jimmy Poppin'. Dumb white guy, I'm not old or new, but middle school, fifth grade, like junior high. I don't know most of y'all peeps be bugging, giving props to my hoax. You fly and I can't take to the heat, cause I'm the other white man known as Get Bucky Fry. I'm hung like planet Pluto, hard to see with a naked eye, but if I crash into your rains, I'd stick it where the sun don't shine. I'm kinda like Han Solo, always stroking my own Wookiee I'm the root of all this evil, yeah, but you can call me Cookie The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire We don't need no water, let the motherfucker burn Motherfucker, burn.